Lighthouse Scientific Education presents a lecture in the Introduction to Chemistry series. The topic, Fundamental Properties of Matter. We will begin our discussion on fundamental properties with a definition of matter, followed by states of matter, then define chemical and physical changes, which are part of chemical and physical properties. We will introduce the concept and give examples of chemical properties and physical properties, which will further define into qualitative or quantitative properties and intensive or extensive properties. Matter, a definition. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space, and that is volume. You and I have mass. Everything that we can touch has mass. Mass is a quality that matter contains. Mass is a very basic fundamental property of matter. Importantly, an object's mass is the same everywhere in the universe. That might take some explaining. When considering the mass component of matter, we find ourselves at weight. Weight is a measurement of mass. Weight and mass are not the same thing. Sometimes we will treat them as if they are the same, that is, use weight for mass, but they are different because weight is dependent on a force, such as gravity. Balances and scales are devices for measuring weight. Weight to mass is proportional for all objects on the Earth since they experience the same gravity. Anything with twice the mass has twice the weight. They are directly proportional. And that allows us to use weight as a substitute for mass in many instances. On to states of matter. Matter is made up of many small particles, and we will get to those particles later on. There are four main states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. At this level of chemistry, we usually just consider the first three states. The classification of a state is based on the particle's energy, arrangement, and the distance between particles. We can use water as a demonstration of states. There is solid, liquid, and gas, which is also referred to as vapor. We would discuss these three states of matter based on the behavior of the particles that make up that matter. We will consider the energy of the particles and the distance between the particles. Another worthwhile consideration is the arrangement of the particles. Beginning with solid, energy of particles in the solid are relatively low. The particles are tightly packed, and they are in fixed locations relative to each other. For liquids, the energy of the particles are higher. We'll say medium as compared to solids. They are also tightly packed, but they can slide past each other. Liquid is fluid. It can move. And finally, the energy of the particles in a gas is high, again, relative to solid. The particles are much further apart in a gas, and they move freely about the space that they are in. From an energy perspective, the higher the particle's energy, the more likely it is to move about. So colder, low energy particles stay in a fixed position. If they are heated up, gain more energy, they begin to slide past each other. Further heating allows them to break free of each other and disperse into their environment. Transitions between states can also be viewed from the perspective of heating up. Transitioning from solid to liquid is, of course, melting. Going from liquid to gas is called boiling. It can also be called evaporation. And viewing the transition from the perspective of cooling down, we have a gas becoming a liquid, which is called condensation. Going from a liquid to a solid is, of course, freezing. These states of matter will be covered more in depth in lectures dealing with intermolecular forces. Changes in matter. 
there are two types of such changes. The first is chemical change. In these changes, new substances are formed that are chemically different from original substances. Side note, substance is a term that refers to a particular kind of matter with uniform or the same properties. Water is a substance since each drop of pure water has the same property as every other drop. Indicators that a substance has undergone a chemical change include change in color, energy like heat or fire, and odor. Examples include burning, eating, rusting, and decay. In each of these changes, something new is formed. The second type of change, physical change. Here, the substance is not fundamentally changed. Examples include tearing, squishing, bending, melting, really any of the state of matter transitions, and dissolving. In each example, the matter is the same type of matter after the change as it was before. We will now look at some changes and categorize them as either physical or chemical based on these definitions. Do not worry if you do not know the types of changes. We are quizzing to develop an understanding of change. We begin with evaporation. Is it a physical or chemical change? It is a physical change. If water evaporates, it is still water, but in the vapor or gas form. The vapor form is not a new substance. Next one. Cutting a branch. Physical or chemical? It is physical. Cutting simply makes smaller pieces of the same substance. What about a nail that is rusting? It's chemical. The iron in the nail is chemically different than the iron in the rust. Breaking a window? Right. This is a physical process because the smaller shards of glass are the same material as the larger window. Salt dissolved in water. It is the salt that we are interested in here. Does the salt become a different substance when it is dissolved? No, it is still salt. It tastes like salt. That makes dissolving a physical process. What about burning a match? Yes, that is a chemical process because both the tip of the match and the wood of the match become different substances once it burns. What about baking a cake? Mm. That's a little trickier. Well, the food stuff in the batter is chemically different than the cake. So cooking is fundamentally a chemical process. Practice the problems in your text. The more you see these questions, the better you will be at sorting them out. Changes in matter was concerned with whether or not a chemical process had occurred. Properties of matter is also concerned with change, but digs deeper into the fundamental essence of matter. A property of a substance can be defined as a special capability or power or something possessed. There are two major types of properties concerning matter. One is chemical properties. The substance undergoes a change. The original substance is transformed into a new substance. Then there are physical properties. Here, the property is observed without a fundamental change in the substance. Physical and chemical properties are broad descriptions of properties, and we will cover each in some detail. We will start with chemical properties. This is when a substance undergoes a change, is transformed, and becomes a new substance. Examples are a good way of highlighting that kind of change. We will look at an original substance that undergoes a change and becomes a new substance. We will also look at the process of change to familiarize ourselves with some chemistry terminology. It's too early in your study of chemistry to know most of these processes, but it is not too early to meet them. Our first substance is an iron nail. It undergoes a change and becomes a rusty nail. This process is called oxidation. Oxidation is a major form of chemical reaction. The next substance is firewood. It undergoes a change that produces smoke and fire and yes, some ash. This process is called combustion, which is absolutely everywhere around us, including the cells in our body. 
We can generalize this changing process by calling any original substance a reactant. And any new substance following a transition, the product or products. Those are terms used to describe the chemical reaction. Chemical reactions are a big part of studying chemistry. Another example is an everyday example, curly hair, which can be made into straight hair. While this transition has a chemical term, hair straightening works just for now. The last example is sugar and yeast, which combine under the proper conditions to generate alcohol and carbonation. This process is called fermentation. The take home lesson with chemical properties, new substances are chemically different from the original substance. Returning to the other one of the two major types of properties of matter, physical properties, these are observed without a fundamental change in the substance. When considering physical properties of a substance, there are two general distinctions. The first is, does the property of interest require a measurement to be made? This determines whether the property is quantitative or qualitative. The second is, does the value of the property of interest change with the amount of matter? This distinction decides whether the property is extensive or intensive. We will look at both of these distinctions in greater detail. The first distinction involves measurement. Qualitative properties deal with descriptions of matter. They do not require measurements. Properties such as texture, color, smell, and luster fall into this group. By the way, luster refers to the shininess of the metals. These are observable properties that require no measurement. Qualitative is often tagged to quality. Both terms begin with qual. And then there's quantitative. These properties deal with numerical values from measurements. Examples of quantitative include weight, volume, height, width, time, temperature, and melting point. Each of these properties requires some sort of measurement to be made. Quantitative is often tagged to quantity. Both terms begin with quant. The other major category in physical properties considers whether there is a change in the property with a change in the amount of matter. Intensive properties are independent of the amount of matter. Examples include texture, color, density, and melting point. In each example, doubling the amount of matter does not alter the description of the property. Intensive is often but not always tagged to qualitative. We still need to ask the does it need a measurement question. If the properties, however, are dependent on the amount of material, the property is called extensive. Examples include weight, volume, height, time, temperature. Anything that changes with size is an extensive property. Extensive is almost always tagged to quantitative. On to some examples. As noted, pictured here is the element sulfur. Looking at it, we can see that sulfur is yellow. The yellow color is independent of amount or measurement. The property color is therefore intensive, independent of amount, and qualitative, does not require a measurement. Sulfur has a melting point of 235 degrees Fahrenheit. If it was edible, it would melt nicely on a pizza. Considering that sulfur smells like rotten eggs, it would probably not be a popular topping. The temperature of melting is independent of amount, but dependent on a measurement with a thermometer. The property melting point is therefore intensive, independent of amount, and quantitative, requiring a measurement. A cubic yard of sulfur weighs 1.7445 tons. The weight of sulfur is dependent on the amount of sulfur and is dependent on a measurement, a very large scale. The property weight is therefore extensive, 
dependent on amount, and quantitative, dependent on a measurement. Recapping the lecture, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space or volume. States of matter, three being solid, liquid, and gas, are based on particles' energy, arrangement, and the distance between particles. Chemical change, new forms that are chemically different. Physical change, form of matter does not change. There are two major categories of properties, the first being chemical properties, the substance undergoes a change. The original substance is transformed into a new substance. And there is physical properties observed without a fundamental change in the substance. These properties can be broken down into two subcategories. Quantitative and qualitative, where qualitative properties deal with descriptions, think quality. And quantitative properties deal with numerical values, measurements, think quantity. Physical properties can be broken down into intensive and extensive properties, where intensive properties are independent of the amount of material, and extensive properties are dependent on the amount of material. And that concludes our lecture on fundamental properties of matter. Remember to practice what you've seen to truly build understanding. Head over to concepts and definitions and strengthen your comprehension.